Hi, hello, how do you do? I'm Rochelle, welcoming you back to the bedroom. If you can't tell today, <laughs> I'm in more of a somber mood. And that's because today we're going to do something a little different. And I am going to talk about my battle with epilepsy. As I'm seeing more and more people pass away from seizures and just it keeps becoming a thing in my life I guess it's best to talk about it now and then hopefully I can update you later once I start getting moving on some answers I'm not wearing makeup in case I cry I don't think I'll cry, but the truth is, I could. So, no makeup for today. Hope that's okay with y'all. <laughs> if it's not, I really don't care. For me, epilepsy started in adulthood. I was living with my boyfriend at the time, now husband, but at the time he was my boyfriend, and we lived in Edmore, Michigan. It was the 13th, 14th, something, 13th or 14th of December in 2013. The first thing I personally remember is when they lift the stretcher up to click it and get it in place to put it in the ambulance, that's my first memory. That's the first thing I remember. I had no idea what was going on. And when it locked, like, I came to and everything was clear. Kevin's right there telling me, for the seventh time, you just had a seizure. We are going to the hospital, la da 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 da. And I'm just like, what? A seizure and he's like yes I've told you this like seven times and nothing none of it none of it stuck I had at this point been awake for about a half an hour but I was out of it there it wasn't me <laughs> but I guess in this time before the ambulance came he had been trying to get me dressed and ready to go and I guess he was handing me clothes to put on, and instead of putting them on, I was just like bunching them up, using them as a pillow. Which, looking back now, is kind of funny. At the time, no. Not funny. At the time, scary. But now, all I wanted to do was go back to sleep, and I think that's hilarious. <laughs> It took me to the hospital via ambulance. It was my first ambulance ride. One none special. <laughs> Cost special though, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, that one. All the tests came back normal. Everything came back normal. So they said it pretty much just must have been a rare occurrence. But then, almost exactly a year later, Christmas Eve, I had my second seizure. Now, the second seizure is probably the weirdest because it's the one outlier. My second seizure is the only one to have taken place once I had already been awake. Every other seizure I've had happens like 7 a.m. I've woken up and I'm trying to go back to sleep. This one happened after church, after lunch, on the way home, on the side of the road. Neither me and Kevin had our phones. And I honestly can't remember at this point if we ended up driving or taking an ambulance. I really don't. Because part of this epilepsy stuff is that it messes with your head. Once again, did all the tests, everything came back normal. When you have a second seizure, you're ruled epileptic. If you want to drive, you have to be on anti-seizure medication. Now, 
anti-seizure medication has some side effects. It messes with your head as well. You have to be on this medication for a specific amount of time before you can earn back your driving privileges. And this medication comes with all sorts of fun side effects. <laughs> when they prescribed me Keppra, or if I say it wrong, I apologize, but Leviticam, they also prescribed prenatals because it is common for it to cause birth defects in pregnancy. So as a precaution, they gave me prenatals to take with it. And another vitamin. Um, at the time, I noticed a few side effects. I noticed mood swings right away. A lot of changes, depression, but I mainly associated all of that with pretty much losing my freedom because I couldn't drive. <laughs> and when you can't drive, everything you do is kind of on other people's schedules. That's just how it is. <laughs> Kepra for me, is not fun. It meant being tired all the time. It meant mood swings. It meant bringing out even more anxiety and any other stuff in my head. It just made it ten times worse. And that was that. But... I was seizure free. I was on that for three years, which in those three years, I was seizure free. So I got to be seizure free the year of my wedding. I got to be seizure free the next two years after that. And that, that was nice. In those three years, though, that feeling of just depression never really went away. Even when my driving privileges came back and everything was going good, like, I wouldn't really call it depression. It was more just mood swings and I was tired all the time which I guess depression but like I didn't feel depressed I didn't think it was depression but eventually <laughs> I got off that started taking CBD capsules and vitamins from a naturopath I think I said that right <laughs> and I thought things were going really good. I thought. Because then August of this year came when I had a small one. It, had, it was honestly the smallest one of all of them. Didn't even have a headache afterwards. Like, I didn't go to the doctor, which everyone on Facebook yelled at me for. But <laughs> I didn't go to the doctor because so far, every single time, it was just expensive and for me to get zero answers and all the tests to come back normal. So I didn't go to the doctor. I was like, maybe I'm just stressed out because there was some stuff happening. <laughs> but then came October, where yet another one happened. And this one was violent. This one was bad. I remember coming to, I feel like I came to a lot quicker than I usually do. But other than that, I was sore for days. I'm usually just sore for a day. I was sore for days. I had a headache for days. And they put me back on Keppra. And I once again 
Lost my freedom and my driving privileges. And we're back to that feeling again. And it sucks because I know things are good. Like, things are coming together between me and my husband and things are going somewhere with our plans. They were moving ahead. And then everything got turned upside down. But I'm not letting this stop any of that because I feel like that's what I've done in the past and that's why it's taken so long for us to get where we want to get. Actually, I finally got in touch with the neurologist. I have made an appointment January 7th. I will keep you updated on anything they can find. <laughs> For now, I'm feeling more hopeful than I have in the past. I am excited about what's to come, especially for me and Kevin. I know I'm not going to let it fully get in the way of my life this time. I have faith in that. I'd say the weird thing, the weirdest part about it, and like why I wasn't sure if I would be sad or be giggly throughout this video and whatever, is because it's kind of an out-of-body sickness. For me, at least, the days before and usually after, other than the usual headache and body pains, I feel fine before and after a seizure. Like, you can't tell you're sick. And then all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, your body just goes into this violent fit and there goes everything. <laughs> but yet you feel fine. And it's just, it's hard to explain because of that. I really don't know how to put it into words with epilepsy, it's just, there and I've been fighting it. You know, the last time I was on pills, my main issue, my main focus was just being on them to get off and get be on them to get off. It's just three years. It's just three years where this time, as soon as I see the neurologist, I'm gonna be like, different pills, please. Even though other doctors have offered antidepressants, I would like to just try different pills first <laughs> and go from there. If I see the same results and it's just the natural reaction, then okay, maybe. But this is why I haven't really been posting as much as usual, because the truth is I haven't really known what to talk about. I have felt a little lost and just not very inspired. But then the other day I sat down wrote a song, got all my feelings out about a bunch of different things, and I hope someday you'll see that song. <laughs> I guess you could say it started me just wanting to speak my truth and be honest and open, and I'm walking into 2020 with my eyes open, I'm ready to take in the lessons, any health advice, whatever they tell me I should change or do, anything. <laughs> I'm ready to see what the year's gonna bring. I think, even though it's just at the end of 2019, 2019 was a year full of twists and turns. It was very roller coastery. It was very, a very roller coaster like year. At some parts of the year, I felt like I was in a time warp, and at other parts of the year, I just felt like I was at the beginning, and I just going around and around and around and around. And that's just pretty much how my health is. And I'm hoping, moving forward, to change that, and I'm hoping that being honest in this way 
I don't know, sh shows some of you something. It's weird because I feel like I should be showing more emotion. But this is the response we get. This blah, sarcastic, giggly person. When it's actually messing with my head a lot. I just know through faith and patience and resilience, I will get through this. I have a great support system. I have great friends and family around me. I have a great husband who takes great care of me. I know we'll get this. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get the right medication. We will move forward. But I guess this is my epilepsy awareness PSA, that it's not always visible, that it causes other things, that it's triggered by other things, because I believe everyone I've talked to says it's probably caused by stress and anxiety, which, so saying the therapist, yes, I have anxiety. Anxiety triggers epilepsy, epilepsy triggers depression, and it goes around and around and around and around. <laughs> And I'm left as this sarcastic, not fully inspired some days, extra inspired late at night, other days person. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> One day at a time, I'll get there. And I guess I just hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something about the effects that epilepsy can have because having seizures sucks. I personally have grand mal seizures. There are, I want to say over 300 different types of seizures that people can have. To my knowledge, I only have ever had grand mal seizures. Some people later find out that they've been having the, some of the tinier ones like their whole life. Some of them are just zoning out and then coming back like nothing happened and you just think you zoned out. Like Zoning out's natural, it's normal, people do it all the time. Ditsy people do it extra all the time, but what if they're not ditsy? What if they're epileptic and they don't know it? And because everybody just called them dumb, they never thought to bring it up to the doctor. I zoned out all the time. I never brought it up to the doctor. I probably will be when I see the neurologist, but I never brought it up, so. For now, I'm still going to be trying to get videos out to you as often as I can. If I continue to be uninspired or just confused, be patient with me. I'll come back. I will. When I do, y'all better watch out. <laughs> but for now, I guess, wish me luck. Hopefully we can get something figured out, some answers, a change of medication, and on the right path. I guess this is just a general PSA to anyone out there. If you're dealing with epilepsy or have someone in your life dealing with epilepsy or have any tips or medication suggestions or have been on Kepra yourself or know someone who was and saw their side effects, anything, anything that's related, comment it below. I would love to discuss this further with anyone this time around, I'm being an open book. So hopefully that relieves some of the anxiety that's going on in here. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not fooling around this time. I want to be happy. I want, I mean, I have a happy life. I have a great life and I like when I can recognize it and not make a bad moment a bad day every day because that's what it's been and I'm over it. I just, I just want to be happy.